Hi everyone! Welcome to Julie Sunflower's little songwriting corner. Um, because today I thought I would share with you how I wrote this new song. And it's quite interesting because it's a song based on an old poem. Because I have my little bookshelf here. These are almost all of my books. I only keep the ones that I'm actually reading and going back to. And this book is called uh, Den Danske Lyrik efter 1870, the Danish lyric after 1870. And this book is full of poems by, well, most of the poets have passed now. Um, so you can say it's semi-old uh, poetry and lyrics. Um, and I really, really love this page. It's uh, poems by e Edith Ruhl, who died in 1956. And it says that she would write songs about the wonders and the evils of love. And this poem called Sommer Begynder, The Summer Begins, is absolutely beautiful. Um, Duft af vilde roser, the smell of wild roses from a summer that I remember. Um, I remember the nightingale sweet kissing music. Um, do you remember? It's a long time ago that my life was full, uh, got full of lundum. I don't know how to translate that word actually. But yeah, it's about loving and also the sins of love. Uh, so you can tell that it's from a different time, but the images or the natu nature images that you get from the song are so beautiful. So I started just uh, trying to make a melody off of the first sentence. So, Margot singles a sacta. Margot singles a sacta. I de høje tætte buske. I en duft af vilde rosa fra en sommer, jeg kan huske. So that's what it turned out. Uh, it took me a while to get to this melody line. I tried different things. And then I realized that once you're singing this end up here, then another voice begins down here. And um, in order to play around with that, I um, I recorded it on my phone. Um, and right now the music will come out of this little speaker. And I'm using GarageBand for this. So I recorded the, the first voice and then I put on another voice and also added a second voice. So I hope you will enjoy this. I will film around my room <laughs> while you listen to this. All right, enjoy. That's the song. Um, I hope to be able to record this in great quality someday, perhaps together with some of the other songs that are based on uh, old poetry. And I've, I've written since I was about 15, I started writing songs on Emily Dickinson's um, poems and also wrote songs on Halfdan Rasmussen's poems and so on. 
So it's really nice to play around with this. And if you're a songwriter and you would like to try this, just go to an old antique store, bookstore. Uh, there's one in Fjordstred in Copenhagen. And pick out a poetry book that you think looks in inspiring in some way or or just rent uh, something from or borrow something from the library, buy an old poetry book and then try just looking at the lyrics if anything speaks to you and try to make a melody and some chords to it. At least for me it makes me write songs in a different way and sometimes it becomes very beautiful and yeah. Otherwise, I hope you'll have a wonderful day and take care. Well, now my neighbor starts with the construction in his room. So it's a good time to say bye. <laughs> and now you probably thought that the video was over, like I told you, but I actually wanted to add another section um, because I wanted to go into who was Edith Rode, uh, Edith Rode. So I uh, went on Wikipedia and I read her Danish and English Wikipedia page and uh, a little bit extra on Kvinfo, a website about Danish women. So first I want to show you a beautiful picture of, uh, like a beautiful portrait of Edith. I think it's so beautifully taken. It's by Frederik Riese. Frederik Riese. I just absolutely love the the position of the hat and her look and the lighting. It's so beautiful. So I just want to show you that. But from reading about Edith, what really spoke to me was here I am as a free Danish woman in this modern Copenhagen. And it was interesting to read about, um, you know, the struggle struggles that she had to, to deal with and write about as a woman because she grew up with a father who was really liberal and who wanted you know free thoughts in the home but her mother was very conservative and so she actually had a hard uh, relation or a hard time dealing with that relationship with her mother and she uh, never got an education uh, despite her father being very liberal she went to a convent school and she um, she said that she never really learned anything from there and was frustrated that she never really learned anything to the fullest. But yeah, she was a, a writer uh, who worked both with journalism. She wrote for uh, Berlingske, the newspaper, in order to get food on the table uh, when she was married. Because her husband, Helge Rohl, he was also a writer and a journalist, but his pay wasn't enough. So she... Um, she worked hard and she had four children, uh, so most of her more notable work, her personal work, is written after her 60s, um, or a greater part of that, so that's interesting as well. And she would write about how, you know, about women's sexuality and about women's right to, uh, to sexuality, that you shouldn't just be, you know, locked into a marriage and not be happy sexually. Um, and she, of course, had a, well, I don't actually know her personal stories about her sexual life, but uh, she was married to Helga and she was writing about uh, shorts. She was in writing in a short story about this woman who was a very loved mother and wife, but on her deathbed she was saying that she was dreaming about all these men. And I think she, uh, Edith was trying to to get people to talk about this and uh, one of her stories also shook the general public but was also very acclaimed um, because she was putting words to some of these um, you know issues surrounding women's freedom of speak and speech and freedom of sexuality like i promised i looked up the word lunda and it means hidden or secret so it refers to, you know, either, you know, having a loving relationship while you're uh, perhaps married. And this actually rang a bell because I read that first she was married to someone else than Helge. Because in order for her to get away from her family, she had to get married because you were not just able to, you know, live by yourself back in the day. Um, 
due to the lack of having an education and having a steady income as a woman. So she married a painter that she had met, um, and on their honeymoon, on Fritz's and Edith's uh, honeymoon, she met uh, Helge, who she ended up marrying and having uh, children with. So I think it could maybe refer to that overlap and the struggles of, you know, yeah, how hard it is with love and all that complicated stuff and the tough times back in the day. She wrote about, what was it, 40 books, it said. And yeah, wow, it's incredible. And it was also a mixture, it wasn't just novels, it was also traveling books, as she was well-traveled, and cookbooks and so on. So I thought that was very interesting. So yeah, I hope uh, you enjoyed this little extra part because I think it's interesting to go back in time and um, appreciate previous writers and poets and try to think of their issues compared to ours and th it definitely puts my life a bit in perspective. Um, I'm this free woman who gets to do as I choose and um, love as I choose. So I think that's very freeing to to acknowledge that and not just uh, take it for granted. So yeah, that was about it. Take care, have a lovely day. <laughs> Bye!